So now we again went on to basically provider is still not very happy. And so we want to do something more to make them happy. And what they were not happy about was that they really are coming from a world which was connection oriented. Remember voice. Before you can speak a word, the connection is set up from here to there. And then you when you when you get a dial, so basically what happens is when you pick up the phone, you get a dial tone, you put the number in, the connection is set up. When the connection is set up, then you can say hi, right? Before that, it doesn't go anywhere. So same thing they wanted with the Ethernet is that they wanted to have a connection set up. So there is something called connection-oriented Ethernet. Connection-oriented Ethernet and the advantage of connection-oriented is that you can now guarantee because I have set up the connection, the connection is set up at 100 megabit. You can send at 100 megabit, it will get to. If I don't set up a connection, if I do just what we call connection-less, then there might be a queue where it might run into and not get 100 megabit. With the connection oriented, you have guaranteed reservation in every queue. So connection oriented, the path is determined at provisioning. Provisioning could be done just by somebody sitting at a terminal and saying, set up a path from, from St. Louis to Kansas City and it will stay for three months. Or it will stay for the whole year, or it will stay until I disconnect it. And this is how you get a circuit from the phone company. You cannot just send a packet and say, okay, disconnect. You have to call the phone company and they set it up and they get, you get the service, your service starts tomorrow. And then when you call them and say, well, I want to disconnect it, they say, okay, all right, it will be disconnected on date such and such. Right, that is called provisioning. It is like setting a virtual circuit. Now, see, here is the difference. I mean, it will become clear in a minute. So let me answer that question after two slides. <clears throat> so connection oriented path determined at provisioning, path provisioned by management. See, this is the key that I wanted to, you to understand. Management means that we send we, we, we send a management packet, which means the AT&T that is managing their network, they could send a management packet to their PE, provider edge bridge, and say, look, set up a connection, set up a VLAN, or set up something, connection-oriented path between these two PVs. So they send a management frame as opposed to, so you can call it a virtual circuit, but it is not set up by by you know normal thing like this setup is that this PE just sends a message saying okay set up a path. It is set up by the management. Right? And therefore it has deterministic quality of service. There is no spanning tree, no MAC address learning. So none of those probabilistic things. With spanning tree you don't know how your packets will go and where they will go. Um, MAC address learning same thing. Frames are forwarded based upon VLAN IDs and backbone bridge addresses. Path not determined by the customer MAC address and other customer fields, so it is more secure. Reserved bandwidth per EDC, and then you have bandwidth reserved. And pre-provisioned protection path. So you could even say that I want two circuits, one working and one protection. This is, they are getting closer to what we call SANET. The key word in the carrier world is SANET. And they want everything that the SANET does. All right, so we provide the production path. And that is called, and, and so actually first step would be without any standards, one could design a, what we call VLAN cross connect. A VLAN cross connect is a device, not a network, where um, you could go from one port to the other port based upon, um, based upon VLAN ID. If you're coming on port 1 and your VLAN ID is 200, you go to the output port 7. If you're coming on port 2 and your VLAN ID is 201, you go to port 5 and so on and so forth. So this is, this is, this is just basically a device that any, anybody can, so somebody must have designed, some company must have designed the VLAN cross connect and so we have that thing here. It doesn't require any standardization. What does require standardization is what we call PBBTE. So one step next. PBB we already learned. The next thing is PBB TE. That is provider backbone bridges with traffic engineering. And this was done in 2009. And basically it provides a connection oriented point to point ethernet service. So this is not yet eLAN service, it is eLine service. And I put the line in blue and italic so that we have no confusion whether I thought about it or not. It is a line, point to point. By the way, PBLS is a LAN service. So that part, last time we discussed there is LAN or LINE. 
that is line service but this one is line service so for pvv traffic vlans we turn off all mac learning we discard the frames with unknown addresses and broadcast no flooding um and disable spanning tree protocol all protection paths switched for each direction of the trunk and so we basically we add a protection path not all add protection path so whatever we said in the last slide it has been standardized and the switch forwarding tables are administratively populated using management and this is important is that we don't learn the addresses anymore we just fill in the table and same frame format as mac and mac no change so the frame format is same as was in pbb which was this frame format frame format is all same but uh, but we don't look at um, the edge bridges don't look at the customer addresses okay it's all pre provision all right no change so quality of service guaranteed quality of service no need for mpls or sanet sdh uni traffic is classified by the port with the service vlan id customer vlan id priority unicast multicast all of these things are looked at i mean basically and then put into the packet uni ports are policed so just we saw those two leaky buckets we use those two leaky buckets access traffic is dropped access means which is beyond the access itself right and no policing at the nni port so there is no policing in between i mean you you cannot do policing from carrier to the next carrier but you do the policing at the beginning and so here is a total path from subscriber to a carrier to a carrier to a subscriber here we will do three things we will do classification this is what we do we look at the port we look at the service we look at the vlan id we look at the priority and what not and there is unicast multicast all of that we looked at here that is called classification policing and we drop the packet we mark them and marking marking is marking that the ei bit if it is access over the access so all that is done at the beginning in the intermediate point all we do is scheduling and remarking so it should be clear scheduling is simply putting into the right queue remarking is in case we are getting into trouble we can i mean this carrier actually has a contract with this carrier also or this carrier has a contract with that carrier say this is the maximum i will get is 100 megabit or 100 gigabit and if you go over that actually you will have 100 gigabit plus minus 1 gigabit or something and if you go over that then they will remark your packets i use the word enni i should put the enni here so nni yeah the difference between enni and nni is nni is network to network interface and that word has been around for long time right when the ethernet came in that a special version of nni is called enni ethernet nni all right and i mean fortunately they didn't call uni has been around for a long time too they could have called it euni right but that word they kept uni but they changed that nni to enni okay so if you like you can just call this here enni no policing at an ni port so here you cannot put a leaky bucket okay all right so you are not doing you are not really doing policing here but you are remarking let me say I, i think i said something which maybe have been wrong is that you do not put a leaky bucket here but you are remarking because <coughs> because if if for some reason you find that the traffic is um, Uh, this is a good question as to how do you remark um it could be it could be that you are just changing the priority not really the drop bit because if it is coming from somebody their priority would be different from somebody else and we could be just changing their priority bit right so i think that is what remarking means here and shaping shaping is that um, you can shape the traffic what does shaping the traffic means when the traffic comes it comes in a very bursty manner thousand packets show up at one time and that's not very good what we want is if you want to send thousand packets and then one second later there will be another thousand packets why don't you send those thousand packets every 10 millisecond well every millisecond actually so that they will be equally spaced and then the next batch comes in they will be equally spaced that is called shaping 
shaping means making the traffic smooth. So that leaky bucket we showed you actually is a shaper too. That, that when it leaks, it leaks one packet at a time or one frame at a time. First frame le leaks and then you don't do anything and then your second frame leaks after some time. So that's a shaper. All right, so let's see, let me just understand. Everybody understands what does classification mean? You look at the fields of the packets, some fields of the packet, and decide, well, this belongs to go to this particular flow. Everybody understands what policing means? Policing means that you measure and you discard the excess. Everybody understands what marking means? That we mark the priority and the, and the DEI bit. Then shaping. Shaping means making the traffic smooth. All right, that brings us to almost the end. So basically, you see the evolution. Previously, the standard Ethernet was this form, where you had no VLANs, only the destination address and the source address. In 2005 or sometime frame, they added, actually it was 2003, more like that. They added a VLAN tag in between. And then in 2007, two years later, they added a provider VLAN, which they call SVID. And sometimes I get confused because they use the word S here and they use the word provider, service provider. Okay? So they have SVLAN. And then a few years later, they added PBB, which is they added backbone BID, and then service ID. Okay, so the word S is confusing. Well, here it is used for service, here it is used for service provider. I would think that they would have called it provider PID, I would have been much happier. But anyway, that's how it is. So these are the things, and you can see the tag type. This is 8100, means original Q. And this one is 880A8, which means that this is the Q in Q part. And this is service ID has 88C7. If you are to compare these technologies, you will find that um, basic Ethernet has no resilience. Resilience means if something goes, can you still survive? The answer is no. With MPLS, you can survive. With provider bridge, if you use the link aggregation or sort of spot bridging, you can survive. With PBBTE, you have protection and fast reroute. Okay. Security, there's no security here, circuit-based security, here VLAN-based security. So somebody else's traffic cannot get into your VLAN, here it is circuit-based. Nobody else's circuit can get into your circuit. You get a connection-oriented. Multicast is yes, inefficient in MPLS. It is there, but it is very difficult because everything is point-to-point. -point. Here it is yes, here it is no. QoS is priority based, diff serve, diff serve plus guaranteed, here diff serve plus guaranteed. Legacy services, now legacy service means T1, E1. Can you take T1, E1 over Ethernet? Well, yes, you can do it over MPLS, but not really over Ethernet. Because one thing we have not discussed is timing synchronization. T1, E1 needs a lot, very precise timing. So Ethernet is extending now, you know, to make carrier happier, that, that is happening. But as described so far to you, we, don't, we didn't talk about timing yet. Traffic engineering, you know, no, yes, no, yes, you can see, means guarantees. This is basically related to QS. And then scalability, only 4,000 VLANs. Here it is complex. Here it is Q and Q. Here Q and Q and MAC and MAC. So you can really make big, big Ethernet networks. Cost is very low. It is medium here. OAM, there is no OAM in the original Ethernet, and there is good here. All right? So you can see how the technology has evolved to provide everything that the carriers wanted. And that brings us to the end of this thing, this module called Carrier Ethernet. To describe the Carrier Ethernet, actually, we went into Carrier IP as well. MPLS is not Carrier Ethernet, that is Carrier IP, or Carrier MPLS, if you want to call it. The reason we had to describe that so that you can see how the world evolved. 
So carrier networks are moving away from voice-oriented networks such as SDS, PDH, to data-oriented networks such as MPLS and Ethernet. MPLS is very much in there. Ethernet is getting in. Okay, if you go to the carrier network today, they're all MPLS, MPLS well, they're not all. Their MPLS is very much in there. They're mostly sonnet with some MPLS and Ethernet is getting in there. Ethernet over pseudo wires or MPLS is used to interconnect Ethernet switches over long distances. That is what first we talked about. Then the Metro Ethernet has defined EVPL, EVP LAN, and EVP tree, and EVP access services. Let me explain why you need the tree. So the tree came in because lots of carriers, particularly the wireless carriers, what they want is they, they have lots of uh, towers all over the city and they want to bring it to the main office. So what they need is a service that connects many point to one point. They don't need LAN. They don't need uh, traffic one tower to go to another tower to another tower. They just want all the traffic to come to one place. So they requested IEEE, actually Metro Ethernet Forum, that we need this service called Tree. So Tree service is basically coming from the leaves to a root and then from root to maybe one place else. I mean, so you could go to, you know, root, you know, is basically central point, and then from there you can just go to your head office. So collecting the traffic from many places, and there is another, there are many other applications of the tree. The application of the tree is, for example, video distribution. If you are sending out video, like your television company, or your Cox, or whatever, you have one source, and you are sending the same thing to everybody. Right? So you need a tree. And there are other applications. So three is that service. Access we talked about, you know the LAN and line. Then they had Q and Q and MAC and MAC extension. So now you understand what is Q and Q and what is MAC and MAC. Allows very large Ethernet networks over uh, spanning over several backbone carriers. And TE puts the connection less, connection oriented stuff so that you get guarantees. As usual, I have put the reading list and this one says must read. Okay? So make sure you read that. Then there is a whole tutorial here which is very good. There is another tutorial which is very good. And there is a whole book which is very good. So, but whether you go to those or not, must read. Then there are lots of links for each individual topic. 